Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for that Gibson Mod Collection demo shop update again. Ah, unfortunately, a whole bunch of website issues again. The site wasn't loading that well about five minutes prior to uploading. When it first came up, all the old listings were listed first before all the new ones. But that all got fixed pretty quickly, but if you were really fast, this is what all the listings looked like. The main photos were cut off, but you could still zoom in to see what you wanted to see. But none of the other photos were able to be clicked on. So yeah, if you were early to the party this week, it was a whole mess. And uh-oh, Yvonne here bought a guitar, not once, but twice because it wasn't coming down. And he really wanted the burgundy marble guitar, so we're having multiple order issues again as well. Now obviously, one of these will eventually be refunded. But let's go ahead and dive into here. There were only five duds this week that weren't all that special. Everything else was fantastic. And we're going to start with the crown jewel in my opinion, burgundy marble. All right, this thing was 5,800 bucks, and I was tempted to buy it and document it, but I'm so far behind right now, I let it go. But look at that. It's interesting. It got a little bit of a purple, almost a little bit of a red hue. Maybe it's slightly metallic in person, but it's like that whole marble finish that they've been playing around with on a lot of stuff. So it's not necessarily a new design. I just think they've revamped it from copper colors to cooler colors. But the best part about this one, in my opinion, is they widowed just the middle of the headstock. They left the binding alone, so you still have the white binding but you've got the piercing red logos it looks great and then you flip it over to the back side and yes they did it on the back too however zooming in on the neck i couldn't tell if it was there or not it looks like this might have started life as a black les paul custom and they oversprayed it in red that's why our serial number is now red instead of being white as well as our gibson custom decal but had they had marbled the headstock and everything i wouldn't have been able to say no i would have had to have bought it at that point Next up, hey, doesn't this look familiar? We just reviewed a Les Paul Custom that looked like this not too long ago. And they did it up in a satin finish just like the other one. But this time they did it on a Gibson USA product. Like at first I didn't realize it, but once again, it's one of those Les Paul moderns from this review and demo. Essentially, I think what they just had to do is put a burst on it and it looks so much cooler. Put this into production, Gibson. In my opinion, the moderns kind of stale at this point. They need to introduce some new colors to bring it back to life. And this, my friends, would do it. They didn't even have to touch the back, they just let it be. But then what? Another repeat. The last time I saw this, I had to buy it and document it. You could check it out here. I think the biggest difference this time is it's been blacked out and it just changes the entire vibe. Not as cool as the first one in my opinion, but I think it depends what you're going for. But at least they did the back and the neck, not quite the headstock, but ooh. We see the return of a handwritten serial number, but that guitar's not supposed to have a serial number on it. It's only supposed to be in the sound hole. So I'm wondering if somebody thought that accidentally got erased and then they put it back on there. But interesting that they didn't burst the middle here, but they did burst the edges. But this time they called it Mint Chip Burst, which, yeah, it works. Reminds you of the ice cream. It was at 5,900. Continuing on with our green theme. This was a Lefty 60 standard. They called it Forest Jewel, gave you a slight discount. I think it looks great. Everything blacked out, no pick guard, nice dark green color, but you have an extra dark rosewood fretboard that has a nice wood vibe to it. No Les Paul silk screen to complete the blackout vibe. I'd say it turned out pretty well. At the time of recording, Moonbeam Sparkle is also available. So they've got the whole silver and gold thing going on. It's cool, but it's not 10 popped collars cool. But they had a bunch of custom color customs, which is great because they kind of shied away from doing that. I think they had overdid them, but now they're going back to, hey, look at these cool guitars again. This one was called Sweet Sepia Burst. Offered at 5,500, it just kind of seems to be like a brown metallic. Maybe it has a little bit of a light perimeter burst to it. That's a nice dark color. I think it's attractive. It's kind of like the purple one we documented the sugar plum fairy because it's got the matching headstock too which i don't know if i'm as keen on that maybe if they would have masked off the mother of pearl to make that kind of pop a bit more and then just have the metallic on the outside i think that would have pulled the look off better but hey we've got the burst on the neck we've got the wide one on the back i can see how somebody fell in love with it even if it is heavy 
But now one of the weirdest ones this week, it's Burst Blast. So I'm sure this one will be a bit polarizing. Personally, it's not for me. I don't like the whole tri-burst thing, but it's got the black border, and then it's got a little bit of the brown border, and then it's got a kind of a mixture between the two. It's kind of like going into a black hole or something. I would probably like this a heck of a lot better in the teardrop shape, but that's just my own personal preference. And they kind of let us down on the neck of this one. They did it on the back, but... Yeah. That looks bad, in my opinion. Something about the evenness of the layers. I mean, it's like so wide right here, almost non-existent there. Maybe the medallion's kind of messing with things, but it just doesn't look like it was sprayed properly. But this one has to be my number two this week. It's just a regular Les Paul classic, but I love this shade of green. A pastel aqua blue meets actual aqua blue that's transparent. It's got the right wood grain underneath. The white knobs bring out the best of the finish. The clear pick guard works. I'm not sure if the back colors really complement it or not, but they did refinish this, just not in the green color. <laughs> I like it. I didn't see that on launch day. They've got a little bit of a natural burst going on. Lots of nice wood grain on that back. If I wasn't a guitar YouTuber guy talking about stuff, and I was just looking for something for myself to buy and play, I could have seen myself picking this thing up. I mean, $22.99, not bad for a custom finish. Then they also had a 64 335 reissue in Antique Lilac, 5300. It's a light purple 335 with block inlays. Not sure what is going on with that truss rod cover, but that is definitely an aftermarket part. But I like how the lilac finish is bringing out all the purples out of the Gibson logo, that's sweet. Not one you see every day. And then we had a custom shop special, which when I first saw this, I was like, meh. I mean, it's interesting because we got a super sparkly special, but they put a Bixby B7 on it. Wow. That thing looks huge on a special. And then we don't have a pick guard anymore. It might not be my favorite, but I like the streak in the fretboard right here. And the logo's extra ambered. And it was a full-on refinish. However, I think I would have been okay with just a top-only sparkly finish on this particular one. But I wanted to show you this angle because look, it's going to go from gold to red. So it's going to be a little bit of a flippy flop finish. I have a feeling this one's going to suffer the fate of the stock photos aren't good enough to truly show what it's capable of. And check out this freaky thing. CS356. They put one of those finger tail pieces on it, capped off the original stop bar. We've got custom elements blent in, and it's got a pretty nice flame top. And the zebra pickups work with this color combination. The back is nowhere near as exciting, though. And now we've got the duds. SG Tribute. Slapped a Bigsby B5 on it, played with the pickups. Looks like a body refin only, but oh, okay. Maple neck, it's got some figuring. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't as much of a dud as I thought. And oh, it's got the old Gibson logo. So okay, it's got some redeeming factors, but still 2000 for a SG Tribute? That was too much. There's a 50 standard, 2300. Not many redeeming factors here, besides the nice price discount. Put a P94 in the neck. It's an alright example, without a pick guard. Then apparently this started life as a 50 standard, but there's no way. It doesn't have binding. But it does on the fretboard. It has a Mother of Pearl logo. What? Yeah, they say it's a standard 50s natural satin. Okay, I see. They just painted over the binding for some reason. That looks bad on this. Like, sometimes it looks good on the Widowed series, but it just blends in. They had me thinking this was some sort of a factory freak standard neck on a studio body, but no. It just blends in. There's an SG Custom that they kind of blacked out here. I mean, it's kind of cool if that's what you're going for, but pretty basic in terms of what the demo shop is capable of. And lastly, this Les Paul Tribute, which for half the price, in my opinion, looks better than that 50 standard. A little bit of flame, whole lot of figuring. Crazy logo with aged parts. Like, holy cow, they went ham on that aging job. But it matches pretty well with the finish. But that wraps up everything for the mod collection. So a couple of glitches, mainly cool guitars, even the boring ones had some redeeming features. I would say all around a good week, although I'd like to see a little bit more originality. There were quite a few repeats in there. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's check out the demo shop. There was a non-reverse Firebird that you don't see too often, but check this thing out, only 1900. I thought that was a, a fair price for somebody if they were in the market for this guitar. But then I'd never seen this model before, J185. Like, I've seen it and I've heard of it, but I've never noticed that it's got the chopper's cross right here. <laughs> that kind of makes it interesting. But then this 58 reissue, I think they're like 5,000 brand new, so getting 1,200 is not too bad for a plain top like this. This slash November burst had a pretty good top. Similar story on this 59 reissue, 5,000. That's certainly a lot cheaper than the 6,700-ish, I believe they run brand new today. 
This B7 reissue is a decent price at 5200 Now this one started life as a stop bar variation. So this has one of the Vibramate Bigsby's on it. So you could technically remove that. You might have a couple of scuffs on the top, but if Bigsby's aren't your thing, you can do that. The rest is pretty standard here. And then they have this gold custom. I absolutely hate it when you have an uncovered neck pickup and a covered bridge. Swap that around, covered neck, uncovered bridge, that's conventional enough that it works, I've learned to accept it, but uncovered neck, it, it just weirds me out, nobody does that. But that is a full on refin gold custom. And then they had a dark back 57 reissue. You don't find straight up dark backs as often as the natural color on the back. So pretty much just players models, but swapping over to the European side of things, honestly they had some nice stuff. 1200 including everything for an SG standard that looks like this. I thought the wood grain looked particularly nice. You've got the uncovered pickups, it's the 68 style. And I'm sure it's just their lighting situation that makes the wood grain look so good because I mean, that's how all the European demo shop ones look. But then check this out, the SJ200 Studio Rosewood. So I think it was a couple of years ago, Gibson came out with like, let, let's do the SJ200 so somebody can get one of the big super jumbo sizes, but let's put less fancy appointments on it. Like let's strip the binding off the neck, go with a much more simplified binding along the edges. Don't do super fancy flamed multi-piece necks. And they came out with this. And in my opinion, the worst thing that they could have ever done for this series is taking away your Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. If I just showed you this, gave you nothing else, would you not agree with me that this looks like a fake Gibson? That is so lopsided and bad, and this is not perfectly centered on the headstock. It bugs me. This just looks so terrible. And I would love to say that's the reason why it was rejected, but I don't think it was, because that's the way I've always felt about these high-end Gibson acoustic models that get stripped down. They just always look fake. But okay, I guess it's only 2500 when, you know, a full-on J200 is way more expensive. But then they had the 60 standard in distressed tri-burst. 2000 bucks isn't too bad. I mean, the aging job isn't the best looking, but it's probably because it had some sort of a big ding on the top or the finish was already worn because an artist was playing it. So they're like, okay, how do we sell this? Let's distress it ourselves. This classic 1500, including everything. Like you gotta remember the European market's a little higher than the US one because if you wanna export one, you have to pay import duties and taxes. This thing for that price is ridiculously good. I don't care what small nicks and dings might be on it. But perhaps the most interesting one that people kept sending me was this Studio T in Silver Pearl. So this guy's from 2016. There were a lot of cool custom color studios in this general area. A really cool one from 2014 was called the Studio Pro in Graphite Pearl. I'm sure those are future collector's items. But here is Silver Pearl. So it's kind of like the Les Paul Platinum. It's got some interesting vibes. I like the fact that they actually have the silver Gibson logo right here. But if you scroll all the way through this, you'll actually see that it got a special case, which kind of looks like the DJ Ashbow one and kind of similar to the Platinum series. So that was cool. Then they also had a pretty cool traditional Pro 5 in Blueberry Burst. Again, fantastic price for that market. And then lastly, the best deal out of all the shops this week had to have been this thing, Oxblood SG Standard. So this initially was a CME exclusive, I think starting all the way back in 2018. I can't believe it's been that long. And then Anderton's kind of picked them up as like a brother sister thing, but that's an easy, easy $1,600 guitar, even with a little bit of wear on the used market. So <laughs> the fact you could get it for $1,150, including all shipping and taxes anywhere that the European demo shop ships to. That was a steal of a deal. Like that's resale territory. I don't care what scratches you got on here. And it's in one of the most popular finishes. But that is going to wrap it up for today, my friends. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.